Good morning. Uh, my name is Barbara Johnson, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Minneapolis City Council President. Uh, we um, are late starting this morning. I apologize. We have some computer issues with my computer. So uh, anyway, thank you all for joining us today. We have a great, uh, great uh, group of uh, people to observe our council meeting. And, you know, before uh, we do our council meetings at times, um, we have the opportunity to recognize uh, special uh, events, special people that have impacted our city. And we have a couple of people that we want to honor this morning before we start our council meeting. So I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Council Member Kevin Reich, uh, who is the chair of the Transportation Public Works Committee. And so our first person that we want to recognize is our city uh, engineer, the head of the Public Works Department, uh, Steve Kotke. So Steve, you, oh, there he is in the front there. All right, why don't you come and join us? And uh, we had a lovely celebration yesterday. Uh, he's retiring and uh, just had a, a huge number of people join us to uh, wish him well and uh, uh, thank him for all his service to the city. So I'll turn this over to Kevin. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, yeah, I've had the distinct pleasure of uh, serving on the Transportation Public Works Committee, first as vice chair when I first was elected, and now currently as its chair. And with that came an opportunity to work with some great people, but most specifically the director, Steve Cock. It was my distinct pleasure to serve with you uh, and serve uh, along your side. And so it's been a distinct pleasure. And uh, with that, um, so many things were said actually at the ceremony. I'm not going to go into it. I mean, the successes uh, that amounted to where you took the department and thereby where you took the city are, are quite impressive. Uh, and I think we'll capture some of it in this resolution that I wish to read for you. Um, so this is honoring Steve Cockey for his service and dedication to the city of Minneapolis. And Steve Cockey, whereas Steve Cockey, Director of Public Works and City Engineer, first entered employment in the Public Works Department in 1989 and worked as a paving engineer, Director of General Services, aka Property Services, and Deputy Director, Internal Services, before his appointment by Mayor R.T. Rybeck to lead the department in 2006. And whereas Mr. Cockey carried out the significant duties and responsibilities of Public Works Director with the public's best interest always in his highest priority, balancing complex and competing interests with adept technical and political skill to find the best path forward for Minneapolis. Whereas Mr. Cockey had the courage and fortitude to tackle challenges big and small, always striving to continuously improve, sorting out issues related to finances, regulations, infrastructure, development projects, organizational structure, staffing, and a wide array of other issues, all of which will continue to have a significant positive impact on the city of Minneapolis for many years to come. Whereas Mr. Cockey expertly led the department through several ca catastrophic events, including the 35W bridge collapse, multiple windstorms, two tornadoes, and a gas main explosion. Whereas Mr. Cockey led the department through the 35W bridge rebuilding, reopening of the Plymouth Bridge, the Sable Bridge, the Southwest LRT negotiations and municipal consent, the blue and green line LRTs, the Mark II project, Crosstown Commons, 35W Transit Access, One Sort Recycling, Organics Rollout, Facility Plans, Complete Streets Policy, Protected Bike Lanes, Bike Trails, including the Cedar Lake Trail and Dinky Town Greenway. And some of them you just got done the last month. It was pretty, impre <laughs> it was pretty impressive. Um, whereas Mr. Kaki served as leader for the city on transportation and funding, changes to project delivery methodology, managing LGA cuts, regional funding, downtown action plan, access Minneapolis, green fleet policy, building the Hiawatha LED certified facility, as well as significant bridge projects including Northtown, Camden, Plymouth, 10th, Bridge and Bridge 9, which is now as a bicycle facility. Whereas Mr. Kaki expertly managed the city's largest department with 1,000 employees and a 33, uh, 335 million operating budget and 110 million capital budget. Whereas Mr. Kaki uh, is bilingual and is renowned for his ability to translate engineer ease into English, so elected officials, <laughs> staff, and the community stakeholders fully understand public works projects. Um, can't under underestimate that talent <laughs> in particular. Uh, whereas Mr. Kaki is widely respected by a broad array of partners, stakeholders, and sought out for advice on issues well beyond the duties typically under the purview of a public works director. And whereas Mr. Kaki will be deeply missed by the city's elected officials, department heads, staff, and fellow members of the public works department as a leader, professional engineer, colleague, and friend. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, the city council, commend Steve Kaki for his dedication and exemplary service to the city of Minneapolis and expresses a deep gratitude and appreciation to him for his outstanding commitment to the city. Be it further resolved that the mayor and city council congratulate Steve Kaki for his many significant accomplishments and wish him much happiness and fulfillment in all of his new uh, ventures. Steve, um, I really, really do not want to say goodbye, but given all your accomplishments, I'm very eager to say thank you. So I didn't expect uh, cameras here to be at my uh, <laughs> resolution. Uh, first, I, I, I just really want to thank the, the city council. Uh, I really, it's been just an honor and a uh, privilege to, to serve you over the last 10 years uh, in the city. Um, what's interesting is uh, I work very closely with the city council and I don't think the public really understands how difficult a job they have. Uh, it, it is, and it's a very difficult job, and, and you do it so well, so thank you so very much. Um, also, you know, I, I really like to accept this resolution on behalf of Public Works. Um, we've done a lot of really great things over the last 10 years, but this is a team effort. Uh, you know, I, was, I had the honor of uh, leading the department, but this was really our department that really accomplished all these things, so uh, we have a incredibly great group of people, our, our division directors and all the employees in Public Works who are just a very, very talented group of people and uh, it's been an honor for me to be able to work with all of them. So thank you very much. The next person that we would like to honor is Gary Warnberg, uh, who is retiring uh, after 27 years of service to the city of Minneapolis, and he is our pur purchasing director. Uh, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, uh, this is a huge operation, uh, as people know, uh, about a $1.3 billion budget uh, that our city has every year, and so uh, let's just say we buy a few things. So Mr. Warrenberg has been in res uh, responsible for that. Uh, Council Member Elizabeth Glidden, my colleague, uh, who is the chair of the um, Committee of the Whole, uh, will uh, talk about Mr. Warrenberg and read the resolution. Thank you. I'll just say, I, I hope I can do this well because I forgot my reading glasses, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to say a, a really uh, thank you so much to Gary because this is really the unsung work of the city of Minneapolis that's part of uh, making us work well. Um, this is one of these enterprise uh, functions where we have to reach out and work with all the departments uh, in all the different ways that they want to do their work and then make sure that they are following uh, our requirements and, uh, and that we're getting the job done. And it is a very challenging job and you have been here for a long time. I think it will be very difficult to figure out how do we replace that uh, institutional uh, memory and uh, all the other things people have enjoyed about working with you over the years and I certainly have enjoyed that as well. So with that, I'm going to read this resolution and this is a resolution honoring Gary Warnberg for 27 years of service to the city of Minneapolis. Whereas Gary Warnberg has had a distinguished career with the city of Minneapolis for over 27 years, serving as only the fifth purchasing director in the history of the city. And whereas Gary's institutional knowledge and understanding of the importance of balancing the needs of today with an eye toward the future contributed to professionalizing procurement practices for the city. And whereas Gary has served as the delegate chair of the Permanent Review Committee since 1992, 
reviewing all requests for proposals for services estimated to exceed $50,000. And whereas Gary's leadership and commitment to the environment led Minneapolis to become one of the first cities in the United States to adopt a comprehensive environmental purchasing policy in 2008, and whereas Gary's city friends and colleagues will miss his hard work and leadership on behalf of the city, but will miss even more his respectful nature, his commitment to be a role model and mentor, his calm demeanor, and hearing him say, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. And whereas Gary has always been a dedicated family man, he is making his wife work another year while no longer having a chauffeur. <laughs> After 27 years with the city, he is considering a significantly long honeydew list. He is seeking new and exciting volunteer gigs. He is learning to cook. He is doing his wife's bidding for their favorite family charity. And whereas Gary will no longer be concerned with the Uniform Municipal Contracting Act, and will pay far more attention to the United States Golf Association. <laughs> now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Minneapolis that the Minneapolis uh, City Council does hereby present this honorary resolution in recognition and appreciation for the many contributions and improvements made by Gary Warrenberg during his 27 years of service to the City of Minneapolis. Thank you very much. Barbara, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, I just want to say, like Steve said, none of this would ever happen without the staff you have, have working currently and some of my old staff members here, too. That's really what does the work here. And I've worked with Steve and I came together, and we're leaving together. So in 1989, we both started, and it just happened to work out that way. But truly has been a great place to work. Truly love working with everybody here and the projects you work on. And like you said, we touch everything, and it's hopefully the next purchasing agent stays equally as long. So thanks again. All right. All right. I'm going to call this regularly scheduled meeting in the <coughs> Minneapolis City Council to order. Clerk, will call the roll. Council Member Palmasano. Present. Gordon. Here. Cano. Here. Reich. Here. Bender. Here. Blidden. Here. Yang. Here. Johnson. Here. Quincy. Here. Warsami. Present. Goodman. Present. Fry. Here. President Johnson. Here. There are 13 members present. We have all members present this morning. Next item on the agenda is adoption of the agenda, and there are a couple motions. Um, first, a motion by Councilmember Palmasano to amend the agenda to include, under the order of motions, the creation of a sick and vacation leave benefits policies work group. Second. Is there a second to that motion? It's been second. moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Then we have a motion by Councilmember Bender to move to amend the agenda to include under the order of new business the following, a notice of intent to introduce an ordinance relating to the zoning definition of half stories and a notice of intent to introduce an ordinance relating to yard and setback requirements in non-residential zoning districts. Is second. there a second? That's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. The agenda has been amended. Is there a motion then to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. We have acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting of May 13, 2016, and the adjourned session held May 17, 2016. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the proper committees is next. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. 
The reports of the standing committees are next, and the first is Committee of the Whole, and that committee is chaired by the Council Vice President, Elizabeth Glidden. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have um, two items uh, today on the agenda. The first is the Transgender Equity Resolution. The second is the Workplace uh, Regulations Ordinance. I don't know if you want to handle those separately. I had one comment to make on the uh, Transgender Equity Resolution before we move okay. to the Workplace mm. Regulations why, why don't you go ahead and make, make your comment, and then we'll go to the Workplace, and then vote on, vote on the committee report as unless there are amendments to the to the six, but I don't think there will be. I don't think so. Okay. All okay. Right. So why don't you go ahead? All right, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to recognize uh, this very significant action that the city of Minneapolis is taking by approving a transgender equity resolution. We have had a transgender issues work group in the city of <coughs> Minneapolis for uh, several years now. This uh, group was uh, initiated uh, by our former city policy aide, Andrea Jenkins. And so I just want to acknowledge that she is the genesis of this important work of the city. What happens with this resolution is that we are taking the work of this committee and we are institutionalizing it in the city of Minneapolis. We are moving to adopt a formal advisory committee. We are taking more actions to do uh, enterprise-wide work around transgender issues. And I was uh, so happy that we were able to hear from Andrea Jenkins, who today is the oral historian for the Treader Collection at the, at the University of Minnesota, from Roxanne Anderson, who is uh, one of our 2016 uh, Pride Grand Marshals, and Philippe Cunningham, who is a policy aide in the mayor's office, all three of which are members of this committee and connected to community, which is pushing this work and supporting this work. Efforts are going on uh, across our nation to undermine transgender rights. And these are efforts really to undermine all of our rights. So I think this resolution is especially important because it's an effort to show we are standing together. So thank you. And uh, are we going to move in, on to the other item before yes. we vote? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Our second item is the Workplace Regulations Ordinance. Um, this is a passage of an ordinance amending Title II of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to administration, adding a new Chapter 40 entitled Workplace Regulations relating to paid uh, time off and earned sick time, and I will move that item as well. And I'm sure there will be some comments. Okay. Councilmember Glidden has moved the Committee of the Whole report. Uh, any discussion on uh, either of those items? Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, leading up to the community of the whole meeting yesterday, uh, I didn't get a chance to sleep for the prior two nights. Uh, we were busy drafting the ordinance, uh, ensuring that both the enforcement and the appellate levels went smoothly, and just crafting the nitty gritty that uh, most of the time is not all of that sexy. <laughs> Uh, but it, it needed to get done, and I fully anticipated after uh, what I anticipated being a, a successful vote at the community of the whole meeting just crashing yesterday. Uh, but I, like many of my colleagues that I talked to, were absolutely revved, wired, heart was racing, didn't sleep that night, probably wouldn't, won't sleep tonight either, uh, because we're, I think, in so many ways elated by the policy that we are about to pass that will help so many people. Uh, when I was young, I fell in love with the sport of running, uh, not because of the athletic endeavor, but because there's a direct correlation uh, between hard work and success. Uh, and that direct correlation, sadly, you don't find in other experiences in life, whether they be athletic or social. Um, you know, depending on who your parents are, or what side of the tracks you grew up on, that in many ways uh, predicts your future. Uh, and so I, like I think many of my colleagues, initially got into politics because we wanted to create a foundation from which people could spring to create that direct correlation between hard work, work and success. And, and a foundation like that uh, simply does not exist if being sick for a couple days uh, results in your inability to pay your rent or your mortgage, followed by a foreclosure, uh, losing your job, and then falling into an, an endless spiral of, of homelessness and poverty. There is no foundation in that. Uh, so this ordinance 
simply put, will help people, period. Uh, it'll help people with a foundation that will give rise to themselves. It'll help, they will be able to lift themselves out of poverty into a different class. And, you know, I, was, I thought also a lot about good policy, and good policy, especially, especially at the city level, uh, is not created by hashtags, uh, Facebook posts, and rhetoric. Uh, good policy is not created by labeling people business pawns or wacko lefty. Labels, uh, as we've experienced, are for soup cans. For good policy, you've got to consider the practical realities of being a new business. And in this ordinance, we've done that. You've got to consider the practical realities of being a working person in this city. And I'm proud to say that we've done that. You've got to make sure the policy can be implemented and enforceable with both uh, the employer and the employee with equal rights. Uh, the fastest way to erode the public trust in government is by creating policies and laws that cannot be enforced. Uh, and I'm proud to say, with this ordinance, there won't be no erosion. But most of all, uh, passing great policy requires people to work together. Approaching issues with a different, with a mind for uh, different perspectives, uh, different backgrounds and experiences. Uh, everybody up here on this uh, dais has their own experience. Everybody in the audience has got their own background and experiences. And the unique thing about crafting policies, not only do you have to unpack your own luggage, you probably have to unpack other people's as well. You got to look at it. You got to consider where they come from. And at times you even have to compromise. And that compromise doesn't happen by ripping people apart in public. It happens by working together. And the reason that this ordinance has been so successful is we've worked together. We set up a partnership. We heard different people's perspectives and backgrounds. We compromised. We figured something out. And now we've got a policy that's put together that's going to help tens of thousands of people. Uh, you know, and I, I, I want to thank, um, thank the workers. I want to thank the activists. I want to thank the business community, uh, both small and large businesses, the business associations. And I, I want to thank uh, city staff, a special thanks to Susan Trammell, who's been uh, staying up night after night for the last like couple weeks at least. Um, and, and a huge thank you to all of my colleagues that, um, that did consider other perspectives. That, that most definitely is the reason that this ordinance is passing, and that's the reason that people in Minneapolis, of all backgrounds, will benefit. Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam President. Um, <clears throat> I'm really excited this morning to be at this moment and see all of you in this room um, who I've been working with so closely over the past year. Um, this has been such an intensive process. I've been in rooms, um, again, for over a year now. Uh, and this discussion has had its ups and downs. Um, there were nights where we were speaking on the phone every night at 8.30 p.m. after a lot of our kids went to bed <laughs> to try to keep this on track. Um, there were moments where we had heard a lot of emotion from workers, from business owners, uh, and I'm really uh, proud that we all were able to find a way to move forward in, in those moments um, because this is a, such a significant moment for our city. This is the first, I think, of many um, regulations that our city and other cities across the country are passing to address the new economic realities and political realities in our country. Um, you know, hundreds of years ago, as our econo that economy, um, the sort of old industrial economy emerged, we needed to rely on our government to pass basic protections for workers. And workers demanded those. We have, many of us have weekends off and 40 hour work weeks because workers rose up, including my grandfather, actually, who was a organizer with his auto union. Uh, and demanded protections, and that's what's happening here today. Uh, we're hearing from workers who have to go to work sick, and because so many of our workers in Minneapolis and across the country rely on multiple low-wage jobs, it is the difference between making ends meet, putting food on the table, uh, paying rent. Sometimes it's the difference between having a home and homelessness. Sometimes it's the difference between 
being able to send your child to school with a winter coat, as we heard during the testimony, uh, or relying on the school to find one in, in the left behind bin. And these are just some of the stories that we heard from working people in our city throughout this process. Uh, this is a small, I think, drop in the bucket, but it is a huge change in the way that we're approaching how we're standing up for our workers in our city. And I'm really proud of us for taking this step. Uh, you know, I heard a lot of stories um, over the past year, and um, it's what kind of kept me going in those difficult moments. Uh, when we weren't sure we were going to be able to bring ourselves to consensus. Uh, and I think, um, in part, it was because I have one of my own that, that was so powerful to me. Uh, because six years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer while I was pregnant. And I know what it's like to not have enough sick days. Um, and I was in a job where I had the most support you could possibly imagine. I had every benefit and support um, someone could need to get through that the best they could. So I can't imagine what it would be like to have something like that happen and have to go to work uh, cleaning a building or uh, not have my family nearby to take care of my children when I needed or not have an employer that said, you know, uh, it's good today, you can head home. Because I went to work after surgery, a couple days after surgery, I went to work uh, week after week after chemotherapy treatments. Um, and those are the stories that we heard from our workers. Um, and we have so many people going to work in so many situations uh, that this policy, um, again, just starts to meet the needs of the people in our city. Um, I think the other thing that's happening, you know, cities are under so much pressure. I said this yesterday. Uh, because our federal government isn't offering workers the protections they need. And so advocates are coming to cities, uh, and we are stepping up and leading. And the city of Minneapolis uh, is one of those cities. We are the first city in the state of Minnesota to pass paid sick and safe time. And that's why it was more difficult, because we had all of those big conversations about, uh, should we be doing this? Is this overreach? Uh, how do we balance the needs of businesses with the needs of our workers? And I think, as Councilmember Fry said, I think we hit a really great set of compromises. We engaged with our business community, large and small. Uh, we engaged with our business associations across the city. We heard from our own small businesses, and we crafted an ordinance that responded to the concerns that we were hearing from our business community. And we have a path forward to make it easier to run a city in the, a business in the city of Minneapolis. Uh, but we also passed a strong policy that acknowledges that people get sick and they need protections. Uh, and I'm, I think we landed at a really great place uh, with our paid sick ordinance. I'm so thrilled that we are likely to have a unanimous vote today. I think it shows the work of so many people who brought us to this place. I just don't usually do this, but I wanted to just make sure to name some of them. Uh, David Frank from CPED, Nuria Rivera Vandermeid from our city coordinator's office, Peter Ginder, who's now retired. I hope this didn't force him into retirement. <laughs> and Susan Trammell from the city attorney's office. You see Carl in the city clerk's office who really stepped up with all of the engagement that was done. All of the folks that served on our workplace partnership group and the folks from the downtown council, all of our business associations, the Main Street Alliance, Metro IBA, Knox, Tool, all of the folks from labor, Take Action, and all of the individual people, particularly the workers and the business owners who came forward to share their very personal stories. Uh, you are what got us to this moment and I'm very thankful for all of your leadership. Councilmember Glidden. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, well, I just wanted to start with the bottom line, which is that it was a large community effort that got us here, and you did it. And thank you for pushing us to do the right thing. Um, this is something where I, I, one of the things that was most touching to me was um, that so many people really dug deep to talk in a venue that was uncomfortable about personal experiences to them um, that they felt it was important for us to hear. Um, and those were both from the worker side and from the business side. So I just, um, I, I really want to appreciate so many people who came forward to tell their stories. Um, I want to say one of the ones that we heard at our public testimony um, uh, recently that really struck a chord with me personally was a school nurse 
who talked about the circumstance that she would see every day when a child comes in, uh, is sent to her office from the classroom because you cannot keep a sick child in the classroom and essentially is there because the parent could not figure out what's the way I'm able to take that day off of work without jeopardizing my job, which then is jeopardizing my family. And I just contrasted that with my own um, experience, which actually was very recent. Um, my privilege and ability as a salaried employee to be able to leave and uh, go and care for my child, who uh, the same week as that public hearing was sent to the school nurse's office because she was not able to stay in the classroom, but I was able to go and get her. And I'm a salaried employee who has these benefits. Um, this is... Um, this is a process where I feel that compromises were made with input from the business community and from worker advocates, um, in that the part, workplace partnership group was an excellent venue for some of that respectful dialogue and debate. I'm glad that we're going to have a recommendation coming forward soon about how to institutionalize that type of venue for ongoing conversation. Um, and I'm really glad also that our final ordinance reflects the main components of the recommendations from the workplace partnership group. I feel like you put in uh, hard work and compromise to get to that point, and I'm, I, I feel good that we are able to honor that work here with our ordinance. And it reflects some balanced additional feedback as well that we got from businesses and worker advocates in the final product that we're going to adopt today. Um, these conversations, as Councilmember Bender said, are not isolated to Minneapolis. Um, conversations about how to provide minimum standards around workplace issues, such as sick leave. Um, we're not the first by a long shot uh, to take this kind of action at the city level because these kinds of ordinances are uh, being adopted by cities all across uh, the nation in the face of gridlock from our state governments and the federal government. And that's just um, what is happening. That's the situation that we are faced with, that now we have residents uh, who are telling us uh, we need standards in the workplace to match up to the new realities of how our economy is developing. And I feel that that is what we have done, is responding to those uh, concerns. And in Minnesota, although we're the first, we are not the only. So in St. Paul, the process is underway there to probably very soon consider a draft ordinance. Conversations are happening in the city of Duluth um, and about uh, sick leave. And I will tell you that I have heard from policymakers in other cities as well in the state of Minnesota about their interest in this topic and that they are following uh, action uh, closely. So this is something that is a statewide interest but it's something where the cities are taking leadership and moving forward. Um, I also wanted to say a thank you to our amazing city staff who have worked so very hard, and it really is a very large team, but a special thank you to Susan Trammell, uh, Nuria rivera Vandermeide, Casey Carl, and David Frank. And I also wanted to thank uh, staff from my own office, uh, Sarah Lopez, who helped me talk to probably dozens of businesses and worker groups uh, in efforts to make sure we were trying to reach out and hear from as many people as possible. Um, that's about it. Uh, I spoke too long, but um, to the organizations that have helped convene worker voices, say tool, knock, take action, I'm now like blanking on others, but there is a large coalition of groups. I just want to say thank you. That is hard work. Uh, you've done the hard work, and we thank you for that. Councilmember Cano. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Muchísimas gracias a todos los que ayudaron con este esfuerzo. I want to thank everybody who helped with this effort. Um, definitely the city staff definitely the council members, and definitely the policy aides who have been working so, so many hours on this front. I was really pleased to see so much turnout at our public hearing where we had 75 plus members come and testify 
around this issue, talking about it, um, and sharing their experiences of this uh, particular um, ordinance and the impact that it would have on their lives. You know, we heard from the community about how it was really terrible to put families in a situation where they have to make impossible choices. Do they take care of their health or do they take care of their bills? And so with that, we also heard from the community about this issue uh, from a human rights perspective and the fact that taking care of our families is a basic human right. And today, we are making sure that is a protected basic human right. It is not often that I feel proud of the work that we do on the council because my expectations of the racial equity work that we need to be doing are very high. Today, I am proud to sit on this council, and I am proud to be um, able to uh, pass and adopt this ordinance. I think it will have an immense impact on our community. However, because I do know what it's like to come from a community that has to get up and go clean that bathroom and go clean that hotel room and go wash those dishes, I know we can do more. And again, you know, this is coming from a community that works really, really hard. And so it's hard for me to dole out pats on the back because when my immigrant community works really, really hard, what we get in return are raids and deportations. So when I do say congratulations to the community and to the council, I do mean it in a very significant way. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing the work of standing up, speaking up, and fighting for justice. This is why we are responding. This is why we are doing our job for you today. We work for you. We serve you. And with that, I want to acknowledge and remind everybody that this issue is connected to a broader injustice happening in our city, where even with our $9 an hour minimum wage, that's $18,000 for a family. That's below the federally recognized poverty level. So I am here to say congratulations on this win. Let's keep moving forward. And I challenge the community and I challenge the council to pass a raise in the minimum wage to $15 an hour, if not this year, next year during our re-election. Thank you. Council Member Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. It's uh, so humbling and so uh, such an honor to be up here and to be able to be a part of this. And uh, it's been such a journey working from the early days when this was an idea and talking about it with colleagues and uh, that was before kind of the cat was out of the bag, so to say, and being able to look at what others were doing and to take those ideas and start building support within the community and then to go through challenging times and to be here today where we have a unanimous decision. And uh, it's, it's just really, uh, I want to echo what Council Member Bender said, you know, having your own personal stories. I think every single one of you in this room has had health problems of some sort or another and have had bad days where you're sick and you can't go to work. And I've been privileged to have the support, uh, especially when going through times where I've had to have multiple surgeries and prolonged recoveries or, you know, even just being out for a week with the flu. And uh, it's, it's absolutely been a, a privilege to have that support, but a lot of people don't have it. Far too many people don't have it. And it is just such an honor to be a part of that, to be able to provide that and ensure that for hundreds of thousands of people in our city. And um, I think about this work like I think about our fire inspections. I think about fire inspections a lot because it's one of these jobs where if you do it right, you don't hear a lot about it. But it's only when a family of five perishes in a fire in a rental home where they didn't have a smoke detector, an inspection didn't happen, that you really realize the value of that. And that work that fire inspections does, we'll never be able to quantify. We'll never be able to quantify how many families are okay because there was a smoke detector there. We'll never be able to know how many lives were saved. And that's just what we're doing here today. And I, I think in 20 or 30 years, you're probably, we'll each remember our, our role in this and you'll all remember your role in this because you absolutely have a role in doing this work. But 
I don't think others are going to be thinking about the council members up here. I think they're going to be going on with their lives and happy that they can get that day off when they're sick. And we're not going to know how many lives were saved, how many jobs were kept, how many families were able to care for their children, how many mortgages didn't fall through because somebody didn't have the income, how many people were able to get to that doctor's appointment that they needed to. But so many thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of instances to come over the decades. And we make our city healthier and stronger, and we affect lives and we save lives as part of this. And I just want to thank all my constituents for their support on this. I want to thank all the community members, all the staff, all the people that played a vital role. My former uh, senior policy aide, Ilhan Omar, who was here from the very start with it, uh, through the dark days of it, uh, and has since moved on, but was uh, a key, uh, you know, always had my back with that during the tough times too. Um, and the businesses in my community where we had those tough conversations where even when we were ideologically opposed, they said, I get it. I get what you're doing. I, I understand the ideological difference, but you're doing something great here. Um, and we're going to we're going to be OK because of this. And the businesses that took the lead and went out on a limb and implemented it themselves and showed that this is good for their bottom line, that this is good for their workers and their their workers are their family and that they're taking care of them as well so it's just been uh, such an honor to be a part of it and i just greatly appreciate uh everyone involved with it and so thankful for this day thank you councilmember yang thank you madam president um i wanted to echo some of the words of uh, councilmember fry and i have to say i didn't sleep well at at all last night as well, um, nor many nights for that matter for the past few months. Um, last night, at least four shootings happened in Ward 5. And so while we're at making historic laws, uh, I hope that we'll focus next on stopping the gun violence in North Minneapolis. Um, I'm writing where I'm saying, you know, I'm voting in favor of this proposal today, despite some deep concerns about the impact of this regulation and how it will impact the businesses in Ward 5. But First and foremost, I wanted to uh, thank an unsung hero for this. And um, I know this person may not like it, but I'm just going to throw it out there anyway. Um, my colleagues have thanked many deserving people already. And I just want to thank this person who might have saved uh, sick time uh, from not happening. And that is uh, Council President Barb Johnson, actually. Thank you. Um, sometimes you don't get enough credit. Um, there is undeniable proof of the public health benefits of this change. Sick employees lead to other sick people. The explicit need for food workers to stay away from their jobs when they are sick is one of the obvious arguments in favor of an ordinance such as this. But for many of the small businesses in North Minneapolis, this creates a pretty heavy burden. Increased payroll and compliance costs on top of already very high security costs could be a burden that some of the small businesses in Ward 5 will not be able to bear. Uh, time will tell of the impact this has on Northside businesses like Olympic Cafe, Pappy's, Good Deal Oriental Market, McDonald's, Paradise Pizza, et cetera. Uh, finally, I can only hope that other cities around the region and the state look at pursuing similar ordinances to cover all workers regardless of the location of their workplace. Thank you. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, Madam President. And uh, I think this is a really big deal, and I'm really glad that we're at this point and that we're doing this. Um, and I just wanted to, to briefly share my appreciation uh, for everybody who got involved and worked on this. I also wanted to uh, give a special thanks to the uh, uh, Workforce Regulations Partnership Group. I think they did a lot of this work, and they worked hard and, and um, helped to take a lot of the heat away from the council when it seemed like we needed somebody to take some of the heat away from the whole discussion. And also a special uh, thanks to Luke Weisberg, who facilitated the group. I got to see Luke in action a few times and was wrestling with the, uh, as great as the uh, partnership individuals were in the group. That was quite a project, trying to bring them to consensus and agreement and what decisions do we make next and how do we do it and it took a lot of crea creativity and perseverance. And I appreciate that a great deal. Uh, I also think that um, in a way it's too bad that we're having to spend so much time and work so hard on this. And I just want to highlight that 
this is evidence that there's something really, really wrong with the economic system in the country and in the world that we're working in. And it really became clear to me during some of the debates of all this, when somehow we were having the most struggling workers um, thinking it was them against some of our hardest working, most treasured small businesses. And somehow we were way down here having a battle with ourselves about a problem that is much bigger and is much different. I'm sure we've all seen the graphs and the charts about the, the, the wealth, uh, how much does the 10% have of the wealth of, 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 our, of the world and of the country, how much does the 1% have and the 2% have. And it seems like um, because we're getting less and less and struggling more and more down here, we're having a harder time. During this process, I think we got to hear from one another much more. Hopefully, we are understanding that it's not necessarily us uh, versus them when it comes to business versus workers or, or I don't know what, what other us versus them you want to make out of this picture. And we've come a little bit closer together to find some solutions, at least at the city level here. Um, and I hope we'll keep doing that. I think clearly we have with a lot of... Uh, small businesses joining this effort and realizing I want to do the right thing and, and I want to see how I can help. I think that the council here has worked really hard on our own staff to find out how do we come together and what are we going to do. I think people are still going to walk out of this today thinking there's winners and losers. We're going to hear about how the burden's going to go now to the customers and the rest of us. So we're all actually the the customers of the uh, the shoppers. We're going to all these businesses. We're, we're paying for all, all the workers through that, so we have to remember that too. And hopefully um, we can all kind of share the, the, the burden and share the victory as we move forward and we can work together. And I think it's really important that we um, listen, especially to the small businesses and the other businesses who think this is gonna be hard. And we say, well, we're, we're gonna be here to help make it work because it's gotta work for you, it's gotta work for us, it's gotta work for everybody together. So let's remember that and let's remember to uh, shop in Minneapolis and to be in Minneapolis and support our Minneapolis businesses. And, you know, when St. Paul moves forward on it too, maybe we can go over there and do a little shopping and help them out too. Um, but let's, let's try to do that. And let's try to look at what the next struggles are and remember in the big picture of things. We need an economic system that's just for everybody and works for everybody. And we can lead in this way as a little city here, but let's keep pushing and keep fighting um, for those next steps. I think it's fully appropriate that we talk about um, uh, what are we going to do about the minimum wage up here, too, and I appreciate that that's come up already. Uh, I know a lot of people are working on that, and there'll hopefully be some kind of ballot initiative um, this year. But that's another small piece of it. I don't have the big solution, but let's keep looking for that and pushing for that, too. Thanks. Councilmember Warsami. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, I think everybody's, you know, I just want to echo what everybody said, and I don't want to repeat what my council colleagues have said, but I think this ordinance is, is an important ordinance. I think we have listened to the to both sides. We've listened to small businesses. We've listened to the large businesses. We've listened to uh, the unions. We've listened to uh, the individuals that came here to testify about how difficult it is for them to work in the city of Minneapolis. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, the businesses, the large businesses will survive. But what we want to do is empower the individuals. We want to empower the people that live in our city, the people who vote for us, the people who we took an oath to defend and to, to support. And I think this ordinance goes a long way to do that. And I'm not one of those council members who, you know, who, who as you know, speaks a lot publicly. But I will speak on this to say that I'm very proud of this and I'm very proud of my colleagues. And there are times when me and Lisa Bender had arguments and long discussions on this and with times when we had differences with council member fry and then other council members but i think we came to the right conclusion which is to defend the people of minneapolis and i'm proud of that and i'll thank everybody for this unanimous support thank you council member right uh thank you madam president um so much has been said and i just wish to highlight two things that have been touched upon that i think are quite significant and create some context for what we've accomplished. Um, I think Councilmember Glidden uh, mentioned this notion that things get done at the city level where there's gridlock at higher levels. I think that's quite evident here. If you think of what we've done in the last few council meetings, that's evident in so many things that touch our lives very directly. 
You know, we passed a, a significant amount of monies that go to our public sphere with our park and rec friend. I mean, the, that's, a, that's a big deal. I mean, I remember in the 90s, there was this mantra of the new normal, and I always thought that was a code for privatization and, and less public and more dollars going to less, less for the public sphere. And we said, no, 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 we're not going to leave a tradition of having more for every citizen in Minneapolis to have a place to uh, go to a rec center if you're not part of the country club set. That's a big deal uh, for a family. And then where there's absolute gridlock at the state level, when our, we have an, an undeniable need for infrastructure investment for our roads, bridges, and transit, they can't get it done. And we were able to step up and do a generational investment because the citizenry said, it's time. You have to do it. It's your responsibility. And we stepped up and did it just a few weeks ago. And here we are, the community, as I think Tano said very eloquently, you guys came to us again and again. And I think this is another point, and I think it's been touched on as well by Fry and others. We didn't just have opposing viewpoints. We had a multiplicity of complex viewpoints. And we created a forum in which that could come together and create a product at the end. And I think uh, that with the respect that was given to different sides and the fact that we actually had an outcome from that, I think that's significant too, not just for us here. We, we get to say the yes or no vote, but the fact that you guys came together in that format. And I'm mostly proud that we had a format that was productive and respectful. So I think those things uh, do uh, are worth noting. And I think that, if anything else, we can be proud of as well. Thanks. Any further discussion? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, seeing none, clerk call the roll on the Committee of the Whole report, uh, both the items, Transgender Equity Resolution and the work Workplace Resolutions Ordinance, Regulations Ordinance, excuse me. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Member Cano. Aye. Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Bender. Aye. Council Vice President Glidden. Aye. Council Member Yang. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Quincy. Aye. Council Member Warsami. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Fry. Aye. Council President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. The, those items are adopted. Next item on our agenda is the Community Development Regulatory Services Report, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Councilmember Fry is going to give the report today okay. because I was absent for the CD meeting. All right. um, Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam President. We've got 22 items on the agenda uh, for today. Uh, the items one through eight are land sales. Uh, item nine is a t is authorizing a tailgating zone uh, around U.S. Bank Stadium. Items ten are liquor uh, and business licenses. Uh, items eleven uh, are the license settlement conferences. Items uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen are rental dwelling license conditions and stipulated agreements. Uh, item fifteen is a modification to the West Lowry Avenue redevelopment plan. Item uh, 16 is an exclusive development rights to the Minneapolis Public Housing Authority for the Minnehaha townhomes. Item 17 is a contract with the uh, Minnesota Home Ownership Center for Counseling and Administrative Services. Uh, 18 is an exclusive development rights to Wellington Management Inc. for development at the Capri Block uh, over on West Broadway. 19 is a lease of the city owned parcel to West Broadway. Uh, and then for, and, uh, the following items are referred to the Ways and Means Committee, which is a contract amendment with Blue Sky Veterinary Services. Uh, uh, 21 is another contract for vet services. And 22 is uh, fiscal year 2015 oh, emergency door, uh, services grant. Uh, I move all 22 items. So you're moving all items. I'm sorry, Councilmember Fry, you're moving all items. 
Thank you. Councilmember Fry has, Thank can we get the door closed, please? Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Fry has moved uh, the Community Development Regulatory Services Report in its entirety. Any discussion on any of those items? Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to make some comments on item number 16. Okay, why don't you go ahead. Uh, this is a fantastic project, and I'm so thankful for the committee for their work, MPHA and staff. It has taken years and years and years with this land, and I just wanted to acknowledge uh, this project, which is going to create 16 townhomes for families transitioning out of homelessness. These are our mostly single mothers of color uh, who don't have a job, who have been shuffling from shelter to shelter, and they will now be across from the park, across from Minnehaha Park, a block or two from the light rail line, close to all of our wonderful schools, including uh, Hiawatha Academy, in Kiwaden, and by a big, huge job center, the Veterans Administration, the VA hospital. And I'm just so thankful that we have a community that is supportive of this project, that we have an, such an ideal site, and that we have partners to do this great work. And I just cannot wait for it to open up. This is very, very needed housing, and I'm so thankful uh, that we have this coming through. Any further discussion? No, Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. On the same item. Please uh, close the door. Thank you. I just, first of all, unfortunately, it's only granting exclusive development rights, but it is a major step forward for a number of reasons. First of all, it's going to be the first project to utilize the set aside within the Affordable Housing Trust Fund put forward by the mayor in the previous budget for putting, um, working to have uh, MPHA units in non-impacted neighborhoods. So uh, this will be creating 16 units in a non-impacted neighborhood of public housing, um, fair cloth units uh, in this neighborhood. Uh, so I am very hopeful uh, that the exclusive development rights will turn into a really successful project. And I do want to note that there's just been a long history of council members objecting to these kinds of things in their ward. And Council Member Johnson has been the complete opposite of that, uh, has been very supportive of this project that has uh, that is so important to the city as a whole. So uh, while I realize it's it's not uh, approving the final financing package, I uh, just want to call out Council Member Johnson for standing up and leading on this issue in his ward, which makes such a big difference in our city in terms of scatter site, scattered site and scattering MPHA Section 8 units into non-impacted parts of town. Any further discussion on the Community Development Regulatory Services Report? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Hano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye on all items except yeah. no on 14. There are 13 ayes on the report except for item 14, which has 12 ayes, one nay. Thank you. Those items are adopted. Uh, next, we have the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Report, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Gordon. Thank you, Madam President. The Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee is bringing forward nine items for approval or for consideration. Uh, the first is passage of the ordinance amending our emergency shelters uh, ordinance relating to health and sanitation. This would be adding provisions providing for the licensure and regulation of emergency shelters. The second is adopting the Blueprint for Equitable Engagement Plan. That's a five-year plan to ensure an innovative and equitable engagement system for Minneapolis and also an associated staff direction with that regarding implementation. Third item is authorizing a five-year uh, academic institutional and program affiliation agreement with the University of Minnesota School of Nursing to provide clinical experience for nursing students uh, here at the city. And the second is a similar authorizing a five-year memorandum of agreement with Monona State University College of Nursing and Health Services. Fifth item is a contract amendment with wetland habitat restorations for the Greenway project in Northside Greenway. The sixth item is accepting a grant from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota uh, for $225,000 to support ongoing planning and community engagement for North Minneapolis Greenway. Seventh item is accepting a grant from the Energy Foundation for $30,000 for energy benchmarking services over the next nine months. 
the eighth item is authorizing submittal of a grant application to the uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention for up to $412,000 annually for five years for implementing prevention strategies for intimate partner violence among adolescents. And the last item is submitting another grant to the Federal Department of Justice for up to $500,000 over two years for us to continue our work on youth violence prevention. I will move all nine items. Councilmember Gordon has uh, moved all items in the Health and Community Engagement Report. Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Uh, those items are adopted. Next, we have the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency <coughs> Management Report. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, today we have three <coughs> items for approval. Uh, the first item is the 2016 Urban Scholars Program funding from partner organizations. The second item is the contract with Twins Ballpark LLC for bomb detection security services at Target Field. And the third item is the Minnesota Bureau of Apprehension Joint Powers Agreement for the Criminal Justice Data Communications Network and Court Data Services subscriber amendment to the CJDN agreement. And I will move all three items for approval. Councilmember Yang has moved the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Report. Anyone want to discuss any of those items? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. <clears throat> Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Yeah. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the Transportation and Public Works Committee report, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam <coughs> President. The committee forwards 18 items today for consideration. Uh, item one is the 2016 National Public Works Week. Uh, that was a past week uh, resolution regarding that. Item two is the 2016 Protected Bikeway Program. Layout approvals for three projects that are listed. Item three is the Godfrey Parkway Bridge Replacement Layout Approval. Uh, item four is the Minneapolis Complete Streets Policy. Uh, a significant amount of work went into that, and it's a major addition to our framework uh, to evaluate projects and guide project priorities. Uh, the following items referred to uh, reports of Ways and Means Committee. Item five is a contract with Lindale Neighborhood Association to continue their graffiti prevention program. Item six is the agreement with Hennepin County for traffic signal system renovation projects. Item seven is an agreement with the Shingle Creek Watershed Management uh, Commission for Cleveland Neighborhood Association private stormwater management practices and a series of actions to continue with that. Item eight is the agreement with the Metropolitan Council for Bus Shelter Foundations on Nicollet Mall. Item nine is the agreement with the Minneapolis Park and Rec Board for stormwater pump station easements. Item 10 is the Washington Avenue Reconstruction Project cooperative agreement with the Hennepin County. Uh, and that's re regarding the Washington Avenue Reconstruction Project uh, from Hennepin Avenue to Fifth New South. Item 11 is the contract amendment with Minger Construction Incorporated uh, for the project at Hennepin Lindale and specific to the sanitary sewer improvement projects. Item 12 is a grant from the <laughs> Mississippi Watershed Management Organization for Project 24th Avenue Southeast and it's an infiltration project. Item 3 is a donation from the Minneapolis Downtown Council for PV Plaza Plantings uh, for the amount listed. Item 14 is the water service line repair uh, assessment calculation for a specific address. Uh, listed that will take nine votes to pass. Item 15 is authorizing the issue of a request for proposal to solicit proposals from engineering consulting firms. Uh, this is the consulting pool that we have to establish for those solicitations. Item 16 is accepting uh, the low responsive bid for metal seated gate valve uh, work. Item 17 is accepting the low bid uh, for lime sludge holding tank repair. And the final exciting item is the accepting the low bid for a grit chamber from Contact Engineering Solutions. Uh, Madam President, I uh, submit all items for approval. Councilmember Reich has moved the Transportation Public Works Report. Any discussion on any of those items? Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to comment on item number four. Okay, why don't you go ahead? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is an exciting moment for transportation in Minneapolis as we adopt our Complete Streets Policy uh, we managed to get our policy down to just four pages, so if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, I'd highly encourage it. Um, this did two things. One, we reiterated and strengthened our support in the city of Minneapolis in policy that we will prioritize 
walking, biking, and taking transit uh, as we plan our road system. And the other thing we did was create a new process for decision making around design. Uh, and so as we look at the context of each street and all of the different needs that we're meeting within our public right of way, this gives us a chance to better um, engage with the community to make sure that we're looking at innovative ways of measuring safety and accessibility for all users. And so there'll be many next steps of this as we implement it. And we've um, worked with staff to create a great feedback loop uh, with Councilmember Reich's leadership to make sure that this policy uh, is implemented going forward. There was a huge amount of engagement with our business community, with many stakeholders, uh, lots of support here from um, AARP and our bicycle and pedestrian uh, advisory committees. Uh, again, lots of engagement with the downtown council even over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and so I'm really excited about this. Um, a little bit wonky, but significant step for uh, transportation in Minneapolis. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you. As exciting as that grit chamber item is, I was also going to talk about the complete streets thing. Um, and <laughs> I thought the water valve was maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and uh, Councilmember Bender covered a lot of it. I just really appreciate the work of the group. I think it was uh, significant. I did want to call out um, Nathan Coster, who ran the process for us, and also um, um, uh, Matthew Drydall and Jenny Hager, who worked on it as well, and also um, Councilmember Warasami and Reich, who served with me and Councilmember Bender on the uh, kind of the steer group of this. It's a really concise document, but I think it's packed with a, a lot of guidance for the future, and it's really going to help us improve the way we develop our streets and look at our whole transportation network in the city. Uh, and I think it's a significant uh, step in the right direction. We did also have a lot of help from uh, activists or bicycle advisory committee and others. And uh, actually, I should mention that Peter Reginius from the mayor's uh, office was also very involved in it. So look forward to uh, seeing this implemented. Councilmember Cano. Thank you, Madam President. I'm really excited uh, to support this adoption today, of uh, the adoption of the Complete Streets Plan for the city. Um, I am an environmentalist at heart, so I really see all of these initiatives to help people to bike and walk more uh, connected extremely to the, um, the issues of environmental justice of our city, especially as um, more people want to live in Minneapolis. Uh, we're not um, uh, in the day and age where people are exiting the city or, or having a, an exodus of um, the urban core. We're seeing that it's actually more uh, popular to live in Minneapolis. And so with that, I just want to briefly state that um, as we invest in making Minneapolis more walkable, more bikeable, we really do need to keep a strong eye on the issue of gentrification and displacement. Um, as these initiatives move forward, um, I want to be able to work with um, my council colleagues to really figure out how are we going to ensure that the communities who have lived here for, for a long time, uh, whether they're low-income communities or immigrant communities or the indigenous community that has invested in areas of the city, when, when the city didn't want to invest in those areas, um, really get to stay here and, and uh, reap the benefits of this um, renewed investment in city making. Um, so I just want to say that I'm, I'm very um, proud to be supporting this today and also want to keep um, working really hard to figure out how do we protect access and um, affordability and inclusion for the communities of color um, who should also be able to um, share in on this uh, renewed investment. Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I believe a lot of the comments have captured uh, the significance of the work and, and the good things that have gone out to those who did it. Uh, another shout out, though, should go to the staffers. Nathan, he just did an incredible job. The product uh, is a, uh, a great example of a powerful document, a guiding document, a strong compass for complex issues. Uh, but it, uh, it's not just its concision. The research that went into it, uh, I don't think any rock was uh, left unturned in terms of what information could help inform our work to come up with this document. And, and it was uh, thorough, professional, and, and, and incredibly insightful, actually. And so I just want to give a particular call out to that. And um, yeah, I think it's been mentioned that you know we already had an Access Minneapolis plan. And so a lot of communities usually start with a complete streets, and then they try to flesh out how they're going to go about it. I'm, I'm kind of proud that we're the city that decided to have a document that said, this is how we're going to go about it for 10 years. And, and then it, things got complex and we wanted to advance our, our initiatives and our aspirations even further. We knew we needed this guiding tool uh, for, for that. And so here we are, ready to go uh, with, with this uh, incredible tool. Councilmember Warsame. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I would just like to echo what my colleagues have said. Uh, uh, it's a wonderful document, and I would like to thank all the staff that worked on this. So, 
thank you very much and uh, hope any, we approve any further discussion seeing none uh, clerk call the roll on the transportation public works report council member palmasano aye gordon aye cano aye reich aye bender aye glidden aye yang aye johnson aye quincy aye warsami aye goodman aye fry aye president johnson aye there are 13 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the Ways and Means Report. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ways and Means has eight items for your consideration this morning. Uh, the first four are a series of uh, legal settlements as recommended from the City Attorney's Office. Item number five is uh, acceptance of a single bid from AVI Systems for upgrading playback system. Item six is the uh, appointment of two members of the Capital Long Range Improvement Committee. Seven is the uh, uh, approving an application for free wireless community account uh, for um, uh, Rainbow Terrace public housing high-rise and uh, the final item is a resolution accepting a gift uh, for uh, travel related expenses to Sweden for neighborhood community relations department staff uh, I'd like to move all eight items for approval Councilmember Quincy has moved uh, the entire Ways and Means report any discussion on any of those items seeing none click call the roll Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the Zoning and Planning Committee, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam President. We have four items from Zoning and Planning. Item number one is granting an appeal with conditions for a certificate of appropriateness and historic variance at 1900 Colfax Avenue South, including adopting the findings and fact of record of decision um, as prepared by the city attorney's office that was emailed around and has quite a lot of detail. Um, item number two is denying an appeal for a certificate of non-conforming use at 2636 and 2638 West Broadway and adopting the findings of fact. Item number three is approving an application for a rezoning at 1911 Nicollet Avenue um, to allow for C2 with the existing pedestrian overlay district. And item number four is approving a staff recommendation that an EAW is, is sufficient and an EIS is not required um, for a proposed project at 600 Washington Avenue Southeast. I will move four item, the four items. House Member Bender has moved the zoning and planning report. Anyone want to pull up any of those items or discuss them? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That report is adopted. Uh, next, we have the reports of the special committees, and the first is the audit committee, chaired by Council Member Palmasano. Thank you, Madam. President, uh, we have three reports to send forward from the audit committee that met this week. The first is the employee separation internal audit report. And after the resolutions, I'll be bringing a motion forward to establish a work group in regards to this audit. The second is from NCR. It's the NCR audit that will be discussed in a future HECE meeting. And the third is the transportation management organization internal audit report. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but these will end up being received and filed at this Council. So the action, uh, Councilmember Palmasano, is to receive and file. Yes. Okay. Councilmember Palmasano has moved to uh, receive and file three items from the audit committee. Any discussion on that? Seeing none. All in approval. Say aye. 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 Opposed. That carries. Next, we have the introduction and referral calendar. The first item, or the one item on that, is a motion by Councilmember Johnson, Andrew Johnson, to introduce the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to the zoning code for first reading and referral to zoning and planning committee, amending regulations for lots containing two or more zoning classifications. Any discussion on that introduction? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Under resolutions, we have the resolutions that were presented this morning, the first per Gary Warrenberg. Uh, the second in the book is for George Garnett, who is a resident of North Minneapolis, um, also been a long time um, a worker in our community, uh, across the community actually, um, who died quite suddenly. So there's an honorary resolution honoring his service to the state of Minnesota and the city of Minneapolis. 
We have the Steve Kotke uh, Honorary Resolution, our Public Works Director that's retiring. We also have a honorary resolution honoring Carolyn Roby, who is retiring um, from uh, Wells Fargo, and she has put in 22 years of service as the uh, to the Minneapolis Workforce Council. And that presentation is going to happen in Community Development Committee, right, Councilmember Goodman? Okay, so people can take a peek at that. We also have a resolution uh, honoring Somali Independence Day. So on those resolutions, are there any uh, comments or questions? Seeing none, do we, can we just take a voice vote on that? All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Under motions, we have a motion by Councilmember Palmasano to establish a sick and vacation leave benefits policies work group based on the considerations in the recently completed internal audit committee separation analysis and the city's efforts around safe and sick time to examine the benefits and risks in the current city's current sick and vacation leave policies in order to determine if modifications are warranted. The work group will be led by the city coordinator's office in coordination with city departments, including human resources, finance, and the city attorney's office and representatives from appropriate labor organizations in consultation with the director of the internal audit with a report back to the city council by November 4th, 2016. Any discussion on that motion? Is there a second, first of all? Second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Under unfinished business, we have prevailing wage requirements for public improvements contract ordinance. So council member Goodman, I, or excuse me, Glidden, um, I think you have a motion on that. Yes, I want to move to refer this back to ways and means. Okay, Council Member Good Glidden, excuse me, has um, moved to send the prevailing wage requirements back to the Ways and Means Committee. Is there a second? Yes. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Under new business, we have door closing devices and licensing standards ordinance. This is me. <laughs> I give notice of intent to introduce at the next meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code. This is for regulatory. Uh, updating sections related to door closing devices and licensing standards to reflect current code and charter references. That notice is given. Uh, also, notice is given uh, to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council an ordinance amending the code relating to parking, stopping, and standing, amending the department with oversight responsibility of traffic control within the code to reflect current structure. That notice is given. Councilmember Yang gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to the food code, amending provisions related to the geographical boundaries authorized for operating for food carts. That uh, notice is given. Councilmember Bender gives notice of intent to introduce at the next meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to uh, the definition of half story. That notice is given. And Councilmember Bender also gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to the zoning code, amending yard and setback requirements in non-residential zoning districts. That notice is given. Announcements are next. Does anyone have any announcements? Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Um, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I just wanted to again mention that last night we had four shootings that happened in wards four and five. Uh, on the whole, for the past uh, five months, we've had over 100 shootings on the north side. Uh, and I just wanted to point out, I mean, the first one happened on 21st and Penn, and we had a fatality there. The second one happened on Lowry and, and Emerson. A gentleman was shot in the leg. The third one happened on 27th and James, or somewhere around there, and we didn't find the victim on that one. And the fourth one happened at 35th and Logan, and a gentleman was struck in the cheek in his house. And, you know, I'm amazed that we are doing a lot of great work with regards to the parks and roads uh, and, you know, sick time and all that stuff. But, I mean, this issue up on the north side, I mean, should have – that sort of gravity that we should tackle it and we should tackle it hard and we should just figure out how to do it because um, Council President Johnson, yourself and myself, I mean, I have to tell you, I mean, we have sat through pretty uncomfortable meetings with our constituents. They are tired. They are scared. They're sick of this whole thing. And we have to figure out a way of putting resources into solving this problem and, and we're doing something different that um, 
changes the trajectory of North Minneapolis because this stuff cannot happen. It should not happen anywhere in the city of Minneapolis. And so I, I'm imploring my colleagues to help figure out something on this because this cannot happen anymore. Thank you. Council Member Quincy. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, first, I, I just want to again acknowledge, of course, uh, the earlier resolution from Committee of the Whole that we uh, had a presentation on briefly today about uh, uh, the uh, trans equity uh, issues uh, and uh, summit and all the activity that the city is doing. Just wanted to remind folks that uh, June is LGBT um, uh, Pride Month. So I want to wish everybody a happy Pride Month as that <laughs> begins. And, um, and then just kind of uh, following up a little bit on what uh, Council Member Yang was saying. Uh, in a previous council uh, action um, in April, I believe it was, we passed a, a resolution um, declaring June 2nd National Gun Violence Awareness uh, Day. It is also the Wear Orange Day. Um, I don't think we have to uh, remind our uh, friends and neighbors of, the, uh, of North Minneapolis that they need to be aware of gun violence. But I think it's an important step forward as the city has joined a national movement to increase uh, awareness on uh, the national problem that we have that's exacerbated in our neighborhoods in Minneapolis. Uh, but National Gun Violence Awareness, uh, Orange Walk Day is uh, June 2nd. So uh, let that begin uh, as with the first, uh, as we draw attention to this increasing problem in the city, in the state, and in the country. Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to thank Councilmember Yang for his statements on uh, the situation with gun violence in North and for uh, his work and for your work, Madam President, on this. It's a situation that is intolerable and it affects all of our wards. So absolutely, uh, when North is hurting, Ward 12 is hurting and the violence is not just confined to the boundaries of one part of our city and it affects all of our residents and anything I can do, uh, please let me know. I'm here to help and uh, agree that we need to put more resources into uh, solving this issue in North Minneapolis and across our city. This violence is intolerable. Any further announcements? Seeing none, I'm gonna take the liberty to also talk uh, about this um, ongoing violence that's going on uh, in uh, not just North Minneapolis, actually uh, downtown is, is uh, really suffering at this uh, same time. Um, I spent uh, yesterday evening, Thursday evening at a block club meeting with about 35 of my uh, neighbors um, with moms holding babies in their arms. Um, the block that I was on has experienced three drive-by shootings in the last two weeks. Uh, people's houses uh, have bullet holes in them. Uh, cars have uh, windows blown out, uh, bullet holes in your car. Uh, these are these are families that are uh, young families, um, single women, um, uh, older people who have lived in the neighborhood their whole lives can't believe what's going on. Um, we're being held hostage. Uh, it is um, absolutely unacceptable. We've got groups of uh, young people that are uh, younger people that are out of control. It was only a matter of time uh, before uh, innocent victims was shot uh, in in these, uh, people have been shot, excuse me, innocent victims have been shot. It was only a matter of time before there was a fatality in this la latest uptick and apparently last night that's what happened. From everything I read, it was a grandmother uh, with a grandchild in her car on a street that I travel on with my grandchildren in my car. Uh, you know, I, uh, the other day we had a, um, um, we, we accepted another grant uh, to, to join another partnership. Um, and it's actually, I guess, the Rockefeller Foundation. And I'm looking at the press release about it or the article about it. And um, it says that uh, the, uh, we get a new position, a chief resilience officer. Um, it describes the position as one who help, can help coordinate the, a city's communication efforts between departments, link the city with outside groups working on similar efforts, and act as the resilience point person, ensuring that the city applies a resilience lens so that resources are leveraged holistically and projects plan for synergy. I can hardly read this because it's uh, such gobbledygook. But um, this 
bloom or this um, uh, resilient cities, I suggest that their number one priority, the number one priority of this operation, the Promise Zone, and the Bloomberg Grant needs to be focused right now on public safety in our city. That's the lens we should be looking through in this community, and we're not, and we're not. That should be our number one priority. Every time you take a government class, that's the first thing you learn. Public safety is the number one priority of government, safety of the citizens, and we don't have it in this city. That should be our focus. Thank you. Any other announcements? Seeing none, motion to adjourn is in order, and it's a motion to adjourn to 315 for the purpose of discussing the litigation matter of Garcia, Lerner, and the city of Minneapolis. So moved. Second. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank you. We're adjourned. Madam President and Council Members, um, just before you walk out, I know that they were hoping to organize a, f a group photo um, given today's vote, and they were trying to do that very quickly. Kim from the Communications Department is here while we're still in the chamber set up um, before we go into closed session.